Hey guys, Brent Holt, Build Show. Talking to you about glass. We're gonna talk about insulated glass, vacuum sealed glass, and single pane glass. All today in the Build Show. Come join me. So here's the deal with glass. We had our windows tested. We're doing this new 100-year window. We're really excited about it. We went to go get it tested to find out, you know, how good is it? How efficient is it? And we've done a number of different tests. There's a air and water infiltration test, ASTM 283 or whatever it is, that tests how tight it is as far as letting air and water infiltration come in. And so there was a, a few things that we had to tweak, mostly some stops and some other things, but it was very airtight. It passed both to a commercial grade. So we were very pleased with how well it performed. Then there was the test for energy efficiency. And what we found was is that because we have a wood window, it's a solid wood window made of Sapili, wood is an excellent insulator, right? And so the energy efficiency was great except for the glass, right? And so glass ends up being the weak point in any window as far as energy efficiency. Now, here's the big picture world. Typical house, new house, you might have a, a wall, two by four, two by six wall, might have an R19, R20. Some of these build show guys get, you know, R60 kind of walls, kind of where they're doing some things, right? A window, a single pane window like this or like that has an R value of one, okay? If I make that same window and use insulated glass, it has an R value of two, okay? So compared to an R20 wall, right, you would say that this is kind of your weak point. And so glass is the weak point. What we found is this new glass that actually has an R value of four, five, even seven, depending on which one you use, which is incredible. And you might say, well, how did they, how did they improve that? And I'm gonna show you. First, I want to give you a little history about why glass is and works the way it does and how windows are made today. If you take this historic window, this is a 1920s building, these were original windows, where the, the light is divided, okay, that's called a mutton bar, right? And so if the, the, a section of that mutton bar looks like this. Okay, so there's our mutton bar. And typically this mutton bar is like three quarters of an inch thick. Okay, sometimes it's seven eighths, sometimes it's five eighths. Now, what, what happens is, is this is your inside of the window and this is the outside and our glass sits right here. Okay, an eighth inch piece of glass, right? And then our putty glazing is out here. Okay, there's a putty glazing, right? And then here's the glass put the glass here. So what happened was when I first started building, I got back to Texas after I went to North Bennett Street in 1993, so almost 30 years now when you include North Bennett Street, one of the big sales things was true divided light. And so what ended up happening is, is this is a piece of insulated glass, okay? Now insulated glass is basically two pieces of glass, right? You have a piece of glass here, you have a piece of glass here, and then there is a rubber, neoprene, oil-based putty that separates the glass, okay? And that's, what, that's what's happening here. This one is about a 3 8 inch, maybe a half inch piece of glass. So you've got an eighth inch piece of glass, an eighth inch piece of glass, and then a separation of some amount. Now, that separation can be one inch thick. It can be very wide. You know, some of these build show guys are using triple pane glass, right? And then some of these guys are putting uh, argon g gas in there. And the reason they put different airs and different gas into your window and into your window glass is it stops the convection of air, right? It stops the heat or the cold from coming into your house. The problem is when, when they're first doing true divided light is that if you look at the thickness here, right? This thickness from, he from here to there, right? This thickness, right, that sight line is sometimes, and I think the industry standard is like three eighths of an inch to a half of an inch. Well, what ends up happening is, is that if I put that insulated glass in here, okay, and then that little rubber neoprene, right, you end up with a piece of glass that 
one, can no longer be held in, but two, if I'm looking at it, I can actually see that, that rubber black membrane. So I might be looking at these windows, and literally windows were made at this time where you see this black line all around the windows. So manufacturers were trying to get a true divided light, but the, the spacing was so thick, you couldn't hide it. So what did they do? Naturally, they made their mutton bars much wider. And so what ended up happening is, is that you would look at mutton bars that would do this. Okay? And what ended up happening is this ended up growing to about inch and a quarter, inch and a half sometimes. And so you would look at a window and instead of seeing these pretty dainty lines, you'd see these big fat lines and it looked ugly from the street. So if we were gonna look at a new production window today, now what they do is if you look at the entire window and it's divided light, and you see this in some of my other videos when I break these windows and show you what's going on, is that the whole insulated glass is out here, okay? They no longer do the true divided light because they can't, because it looks ugly, and they actually tape the mutton bars to the glass, okay? But this is all one big piece of glass, okay? So the reason they did that is because now they can get back to a three quarter inch, seven eighths inch mutton bar. They tape it to the glass. They get a little bit better energy efficiency, but we've kind of stepped away from the historical integrity of the glass. Now, so we've found this new glass through our traditional sources and it's cut from Pilkington and it's called Pilkington Spatia, okay? Now the big deal is with this glass is that it has a vacuum seal, okay? Now, as opposed to the insulated glass where this is filled with air, right? A vacuum seal means that there is no air between the glass, okay? And so these two pieces of glass are basically right next to each other with a very thin area in here. And what I'm putting those little dots for is the way they keep that glass from sucking together is with tiny little balls that are inside here that you can kind of see that are about an inch apart or three quarters of an inch apart spaced all across them. You can't see them from the camera. You have to actually get up there and look at them and try to try to figure out, but they are separated. Now, the value is, is that the vacuum seal means there is no air in there. And so the transfer of heat and cold is completely different, okay? It's much better. That's why this piece of glass, right, which is, now about a quarter of an inch, right? So this is one quarter of an inch versus this, which obviously not to scale, is I think the thinnest is like seven sixteenths. Um, and so almost a half an inch, right? Because I have a much thinner piece of glass now, I can put this glass right in here, okay? Put that uh, vacuum seal glass. I still have room for the putty. I don't have anything that's going to mess up my sight line. And I can build this like a traditional window, okay, with traditional mutton bars with true divided light and put this glass in here and have a much more energy efficient window. So it's an amazing advancement in kind of window technology. The other thing is that this is all brazed with glass. The way that, the, the way that this is sealed together is it's brazed and, it, and it's kind of like melted glass, right? And so that you, you have a much better seal, right, that won't come apart. If I try to putty glaze an insulated piece of glass, the oils in the putty glazing end up messing with the oils in the glass and the window starts falling apart, right? It starts fogging up. So this is a huge advancement in glass. This is something that can, now we can have a traditional historic window that is also energy efficient in Minnesota, right? Without having to go with insulated glass, which isn't as effective and it isn't as energy efficient. If there is one negative to this piece of glass, it's this little neoprene bubble. Basically, it's a, it's a stop, okay? The glass is actually sealed with a glass brazed steel. This is put on top so people don't pick at that and, and you lose the seal. Some clients, if there is a negative, might say, well, you know, look at that. All my eye just goes right to that black dot and it's really a problem. Sorry guys, that's, that's just the, the life of an energy efficient window. I'm really excited about this advancement in glass because we've had almost 40 years of using this insulated glass. It fails after 15 or 20 years, right? When we're building our 100 year window, the reason we will not build with insulated glass is because it won't last. 
how can I guarantee a window for 100 years if the product that I put in it will only last 20? And so, look, glass is a thousand year product, right? There's glass from the Egyptian periods where they had glass, and so glass is an incredibly long lasting material. Insulated glass is not. We need new advancements in the glass technology so that we don't have failures like this. There's got to be better ways to seal this up. Pilkington has done a great job. And so now we have a product that really is a long lasting product. And it's all because of this advancement in the glass. Our druthers is for you to put single pane light in your house because we think it is the most long lasting product that requires you on the energy efficiency side to get prescriptive. In other words, you're gonna to need to build up your walls and your energy efficiency in other areas to have these windows, but they will last 100 years. Yes, really, 100 years. If you wanna know more about these 100-year windows and kind of what we're doing, go to 100yearwindow.com. It's our new window site. We're really excited about it. Now, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Hull Millwork, Hull Homes. Hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and sign up for the newsletter. A lot of interesting information there. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm Brent Hull.